everyday people are featured on this program, people who have done extraordinary things and who in their own lives have discovered something better. Our guest is uh, Ozell Elmore. And uh, welcome to the program, Thank you. Ozell. Thank you. Now, I know you as Ozell. Yeah. Yes, Ozell. And uh, I didn't even know your, your last name when we first met. But we go back some 12, 14 years, and I first saw you on the comic strip. Yeah. At that time, you and I both were stand-up comedians. And, um, and we developed a friendship um, uh, immediately, I think, just uh, seeing you for the first time, we, we hit it off real good. But I want you to tell us, uh, since that time, early uh, 80s, late 70s, uh, you went from stand-up comedian to being coming a Christian in this, the University Seventh-day Adventist Church. Tell us how that happened. In fact, that's my, my home church, so I was quite surprised after not seeing you for uh, 10 years all of a sudden you're at the uh, University Seventh-day Adventist Church. Tell us how that happened. Well, I, uh, I'm Southern born and uh, <clears throat> my folks are Methodists, you know. I see. Uh, the uh, Catholics and all that to my family. And I never really know about these beasts and all that, you know, and uh, we, so preachers and things used to scare me because they were preaching that brimstone stuff. And I was really frightened of that. And mm -hmm. so I stayed away from the church. Fire and brimstone. Fire and brimstone, mm -hmm. right. And I stayed away from the church. But uh, <clears throat> I was studying with Jehovah Witnesses a little bit with the uh, Muslims mm -hmm. and studied the Quran and things like that. But I never uh, quite understood, just never quite things was explained to me as it was when I first came into the Seventh-day Adventist Church, mm -hmm. and which I went to a Revelation seminar. I see. And uh, at uh, University in, on King Boulevard here. Yes. And uh, so they was they opened my eyes up to many things that a lot of churches wouldn't give us. Okay. You know, and especially in the Revelation. Okay. You know. So so the beast didn't scare you. No. Because the beast. they 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 sort of tamed the beast for yeah, you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. Okay. As a matter of fact, they dehorned him. Okay? Dehorned him, okay. <laughs> yeah, and um, so, um, but then, then I began to learn about the Sabbath, the true Sabbath. Sure. And uh, which was uh, seven day Sabbath, and went on to explain that. And uh, <clears throat> the most important thing that I began to learn about it was the seal okay. of the Sabbath. See. That the Sabbath was not only just a day. You know, they are wish it, but it was a seal, okay. too. You know, and to to between God and His people and those who had chosen Him, that He has sealed you. Okay. And it was in, uh, the uh, person that was explaining it to me was Paul Arsenal. Pa Paul Arsenal. Okay, I know yeah. him. Yeah. And that's uh, very informative. And I guess I used to bug him a lot mm -hmm. because I was asking a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. How are you gonna seal me? Right. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so he, it was explained to me. So how, how long ago was that? I think that was around 80, 88, 87. 87, okay. Yeah, about 88, so it's, so it's, it's been about 10 years. And when I saw you, um, I think I saw you around 80, um, maybe 92. And I discovered that you were a baptized member of, of the University of Seventh-day Adventist Church after being a, a stand-up comedian and, and, and for, for many years. But I want to ask you about um, a gift that you have, at least I perceive you having a gift to, to make people laugh. And the reason why I say it's a gift because, you know, some people learn it. When I was uh, performing stand-up comedy, it was something that I learned, just like uh, watching people and observing, and just develop some skills like uh, timing, punchlines, and, and so forth. But uh, from watching you, it seems that you have a natural gift to, to, to make people laugh. And when, when did you first discover that, that you had? I've been doing it ever since I can remember. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so even in, in elementary school, you yeah, could, yeah, you could do that? Even in elementary, mm -hmm. even before elementary, I can okay. remember. And I can remember, I used to, um, my friends, we stand up on, on the porch on 42nd Street. Right now, the street from Manual Arts. I see. Which is the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Mm -hmm. And all day long, we just kept each other laughing and things like that. So mm -hmm. I've always been around humor. Always been around humor. Now, now, were there any uh, members in your family who were humorous? Yeah. Or were you the only one? 
No, no, I have aunties. Mm -hmm. You know, my aunties in my office or something. Yeah, well, I think they want to adjust your sound a little bit, a little closer. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Yeah, my aunties uh -huh. in my office. Mm -hmm. So I come from a pretty comedic family. Okay. In that, in that respect. Uh, brothers and cousins, just big, jolly, happy family. Okay. Yeah. You know, the Bible says, uh, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. And I was quite surprised to find out that the word laugh is mentioned over 40 times in the Bible. Most of which are, are positive references mm -hmm. to, to laughter. Uh, for example, in Psalms 126, verse 2, um, the Bible says, He filled my mouth with laughing and my tongue with singing. Um, Job 8, 21, He filled my mouth with rejoicing. Ecclesiastes 3, 4 says it's a time to weep and then there's a time to laugh. And of course, in Psalms 2, 5, the Bible says even God himself has a time when he will laugh. He will sit and uh, those who uh, mock him, he will laugh at them in, in derision. Um, so what the Bible says, there, there are some therapeutic um, um, benefits to laughter because a merry heart uh, doeth, good like, doeth good like a medicine. Um, do you feel that um, this talent that you have, how have you helped people uh, to, to feel better? When there, when, there, when there was someone down, low spirit or something like okay. that, I tried to cheer him up with us. Okay. If I can find one, mm -hmm. muster one up. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's always, I think as I begin to learn more and more about humans, mm -hmm. uh, study more and more about comedy, I began to learn that it was the effect, you know, that you could use it in that form. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, later I learned, however, though, um, and I heard it from, from little Richard, uh, who is, uh, was at, at university at one time and, and studied at Oakwood, Little Richard, the, the, the rock and roll guy who wrote all the songs. And, and I remember him saying to me that, uh, you know, um, sometimes it's good for people to laugh, but sometimes they need to cry. And, uh, and then in the Bible, I noticed there was another text that, that talked about, you know, after mourning, then comes laughter. So, so God is interested in the total healing, but there is a time for mourning and there's a time for laughter, as, as the Bible tells us. Um, so, I, I agree wholeheartedly with you that there are therapeutic um, uh, benefits to laughter. And now we're going to uh, have other benefits right now. We're going to go to our special music, which will be done by Sister Cora Franklin and Sister Ophelia Ridley. And as they sing about rejoicing, as they sing a song that will gladden our hearts. So let's go to them now. in my soul when I had no song to sing yes he put love in my heart peace and happiness he said he would bring then he said spread the news around tell it wherever man is found Jesus put a song in my soul and I'm gonna sing 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 Jesus put a prayer on my lips when I kneel before the throne and he said if I would pray he would claim me as his own thousands of blessings he would send if I would raise my voice and sing and Jesus put a song in my soul yes and I'll sing 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 Jesus put a song in my soul Oh yes, he put love in my heart Jesus put a song in my soul When I had no song to sing Jesus put a song in my soul And I'm gonna sing, 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 sing Jesus put a prayer on my lips When I kneel before the throne And he said if I would pray Hallelujah, sing, sing, sing. 
Ridley, both members of the Sun Village Seventh-day Adventist Church in Little Rock. And we're happy to have them as uh, special instrumentalists and vocalists on our program um, tonight. Um, and we have with us uh, Brother uh, Ozell, and he's with us just sharing a little bit about his journey, how God has led him, how God has showed him something better in his life. And um, tell us, uh, how does y y the knowledge of, of Jesus uh, help you for, from day to day? And how does that impact your sense of humor, just knowing that, that Jesus is, is coming to, into your heart? And it makes it clear. Okay. To be honest. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so it makes the material clean. Exactly. Okay. okay. Exactly. Um, but uh, you know, knowing Jesus and okay. Oop. Uh, put the love of Jesus in your heart. Okay. And Jesus in your heart always. Uh -huh. you, know, you you have a tendency to carry yourself a little different. You watch yourself a little different. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, you. Stay away from places that uh, might get you in some trouble or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, and and we used to be in places that that most to, likely would get us in get trouble. Us, <laughs> quite a bit of trouble, right? Quite a bit of trouble. So he's made a difference right. in, in your life, and he's, he's yeah. showed you something better. Oh yes, most definitely. Okay. Most definitely. Okay. You learn a lot of things, you know, because Jesus, Jesus is, is the word is, is fulfilling. Mm -hmm. You know, you learn how to treat your own human beings, treat yourself. Mm -hmm. When a lot of comedians, you know, talk about themselves like they don't love themselves, mm -hmm. if you listen to them. Sometimes, yes, you yes. Know? And um, so it teaches you to talk about yourself to let people know you love yourself and mm -hmm. love him also. Mm -hmm. You know, so Jesus in your heart, you need that. Right. We got to have that. Yeah. And I just read a, a couple of scriptures that, that talk about um, um, laughter in the Bible. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes as Christians we think it's a sin to laugh but uh, as we read the scriptures um, you know laughter is the best medicine um, there was a man named Norm, Norman Cousins and many of our, our viewers may, may have already heard about him how he healed his own body through laughter I mean he had a, a serious terminal disease and uh, so he decided that he would just put on things that would make him laugh and uh, he actually got better. Well, actually, what happened, it was not so much that he healed himself. The laughter boosted his immune system and released endorphins, which are chemicals that, that make us feel good. It's like our own natural drugs in our body. And he actually got better uh, through laughter. So, so there is, God has put that in us, that, 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 that ability to laugh. And, um, and, I, and, and someone who has a sense of humor, as I know you do have, uh, I know you watch and observe things that are happening and uh, and to see things that you know we may miss is you know in our everyday lives but you may cue in on it and, and just see yeah that there's something uh, funny about that um, and you may ask questions about things that people don't normally ask about for example when I was uh, first came to Antelope Valley you know Antelope Valley uh, okay Antelope Valley it's a good name for a city so I've been here five years Antelope Valley, but I have not seen one, one antelope. antelope. Right. <laughs> See, you, all the comic minds think alike. You know, yeah. and you don't even find a museum with an antler antelope or something that, that proves yeah. that the antelopes used to live here. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know if, if they made it up and called it the Antelope Valley. Mm -hmm. but, but this is the Antelope Valley. That's what they say it is. Right. But, but no antelopes. Uh, nope. You know, some, some snakes, I've seen that, and, and Maybe some they lizards. Maybe they name is Snake Valley? Snake Valley. Yeah. Uh, uh, or scorpion. Yeah, we find a, a, a couple of those in, in, in Lake L.A. and other places. Mm -hmm. But um, I, uh, I, I'm just uh, happy that, um, that God has given us this ability to look and, and look on the lighter side of life and, and not mm -hmm. always to take things seriously. I know I used to always take things seriously. Um, but do you watch out for, for, for things that are, that, are, that are funny? Are you always uh, looking uh, and observing people, human behavior? Uh, sometimes and sometimes no. Okay. Sometimes I'm watching myself, sometimes I'm watching other people. I may be watching places or things, okay. or the news, or newspapers. Mostly what I be, uh, my humor actually comes spontaneously. You know, it, it's, okay. not, it's not anything that I set up or anything. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost usually mm -hmm. on a play mm -hmm. where a person put themselves in a, in a situation would allow me to 
direct coming it to them. Mm -hmm. You know, they say a word or something like that. Just like the Antelope so Valley you, you, thing, you I play. felt it coming. You felt it coming, yeah. I felt it coming uh, uh, way before you got to the analyst. Okay. But, uh, you know, so th situations like that, you know, okay. I, I can do those in my life. And so you just have a way of thinking. And I read uh, in a book uh, once that uh, comedy is the, the talent to exploit the unexpected. In other words, people don't expect that you're going to, because I remember speaking to you a couple of weeks outside of the university church and you were just talking naturally right and uh and then all of a sudden you would say something just out of the clear blue and i thought you were serious but you were serious that's just the way you think mm -hmm. and and it just threw me threw me away and i said man this this guy still has it you know he still has that that that, that co comedic touch that's in a comfortable situation yeah okay yeah. so you can't be stressed no, no. You, comedy, comedy, comedy is something that you cannot truly be stressed with it. You have to mm -hmm. be relaxed, mm -hmm. very relaxed with mm -hmm. it. Very, you have to be familiar with the environment mm -hmm. that you're in. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's stage, TV, friends, church, mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. clubs, p uh, picnics, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. You know, the only comfortable situation that I. Is, oh, it is. Okay. It's very humorous because. You don't get a chance to write your ticket, they do. Okay. Think about it. Mm -hmm. You don't, you want paying, they're not. All you have to do is sign. Sign. All you do mm -hmm. is sign. Um, now you've had a discovery about um, dyslexia that uh, has tremendously helped you to, um, I guess, to live better. And, and what was that? Uh, well, I've had some. I had I had a learning disorder all my life. I see. Mm -hmm. And I uh, never could really get a grasp on the English language. Okay. And uh, especially in uh, writing, and sometimes I would, when I'm reading, uh, mm -hmm. I would miss words, these words out of the whole sentence. The important words that would mm -hmm. make sense to the sentence, mm -hmm. and my eyes would just pass by it. And not even see it. Okay. And uh, I never knew what it was. I okay. just thought I couldn't read. Okay. You know. And uh, so I, I'm learning now about this dyslexia thing. But uh, I still, there's a many, much thing I need to know about it. Of course, yeah. it's, it, it, from what I understand, it has different forms. Mm -hmm. And nobody has to. A lot of people have one form. Somebody else may have. So, 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 what is dyslexia? When I hear dyslexia, it, it kind of, you know, it, it's it's a word that doesn't fit the the problem, it, you know, this, this, when I think of dyslexia, you know, a picture mm -hmm. forms in my brain that it, a person has dyslexia, if they stand up, their bones would just fall off, you know, and fall down and, you know, <laughs> it just sounds like a just bad thing. Do. It sounds but, sound like a bad but, thing. But help us, what is dyslexia? What is it? I don't quite know what it is, because I'm not a doctor. Uh, no, like no, that. but, but from, you, from what I can understand, it's a learning disorder. Okay, so when it's, you read, you see things inverted? Is some that, people do. Okay. Some people do. Some people see things inverted, okay. and some people see things other ways. Mm -hmm. You know, some people can read very well. Mm -hmm. I mean, real good, mm -hmm. but they can't spell it. Okay. You know, so, and, with, and other people uh, can write. Mm -hmm. Very well, okay. but they leave certain important words to make the sentence complete. Okay. So they have to go back over it. Okay. So it comes in all kinds of forms. Okay. So, so the knowledge that you have about the the, the problem. Mm -hmm. um, so you're working on it now. Oh yes. Okay. Oh yes. Okay. Oh yes. So is, is there a treatment program you're involved with? They they started what the, from what I understand what uh, happened over there at LA City LA mm -hmm. City College is that mm -hmm. they start you from the beginning and okay. try to catch up on some things that you normally didn't catch up with. Okay. See, because when I was coming, when I was, when I was a youngster, mm -hmm. uh, they, it wasn't, I guess they didn't know what it was at the mm -hmm. time. So they mm -hmm. just passed you right along. Sure. You know, he just yeah. slow, pass him along. And it really didn't take time to get down to the nitty gritty of the problem. I see. You know, okay. although you learn, you don't really learn to speak well, mm -hmm. you know, and then you have that black lingo, you too, you have to deal with okay. too, mm -hmm. you see, and that's part of it mm -hmm. too. So, but, what well, can well, I say? Brother Ozell, it's, it's a pleasure to have you with us on, on our program tonight, mm -hmm. and uh, look forward to seeing you at, at university, where we'll be together. And, uh, and just an uh, announcement for our, our viewers, um, 
the Antelope Valley SDA Church this coming Saturday will have free blood pressure tests and free immunizations um, this coming Saturday between 3.30 and, and, and 4 o'clock. So you want to be there. Take advantage of this uh, community uh, effort to, to assist our, our young people in, in their immunization. So you want to do that. Street East in the beautiful city of Palmdale. Uh, until next time, we want to wish you well and remember God has something.